Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I'll read from a book titled Introspective by British artist uh, Richard Hamilton. It's an autobiography and was conceived during a period of reduced mobility due to a broken hip and was left unfinished at the time of Hamilton's death. It was published by Walter Koenig as Hamilton left it in 2011, with blank pages and pagination. In his exploration of collage, Hamilton had often regretted that there was a fundamental limitation in the medium. Frequently, some item cut from a magazine might have worked well, but its size forced uh, its exclusion. He also saw that though the medium was productive for making studies because he could access an abundance of magazines, the sources were likely to produce a small collage the size of a magazine page. He tried photographing and enlarging the elements to the scale he wanted so that a black and white photographic print could then be pasted into position on a large painting and worked over or tinted with uh, transparent color. Other sections could be enlarged and painted. To encourage students to work on a larger scale, he hit upon a solution that produced some interesting results. He suggested seeking out bill posting companies and cinemas in the Newcastle area and requesting any surplus material they might wish to dispose of. The idea was effective and the students moved to collaging in the scale of hoardings with impressive results. One evening, after a long day in the Newcastle Art School, Hamilton meandered around a large empty studio in which the students uh, had been working on their projects. The walls were covered with pieces of posters and stepping through their mess of cuttings on the floor, he noticed a discarded film still. Cinemas at that time often had a glass-fronted showcase on a wall near the entrance. Its purpose was to display photographs relevant to currently showing films or to coming attractions. There were portraits of the stars or publicity stills with a caption giving details about the film, such as the names of the producer, director, screenwriter and actors and the logo of the production company, all printed as a caption in the margin below the image. They were not usually a grainy frame printed from the 35mm film itself, but photographs taken with a still camera on the film set. The photographs gave the scene an air of unreality and often, as in the image uh, that Hamilton had chanced upon, some oddities of perspective. The image showed a crucial moment in a B-movie called Shockproof. Made in 1949 by Columbia Pictures, the film was directed by Douglas Sirk and scripted by Helen Deutsch and Samuel Fuller. Cornell White and his then-wife uh, Patricia Knight were the stars. The still from the film Shockproof led to a group of three studies which explored the medium of collage in a novel way. Each of the interior studies takes constituent parts of the missing sun a desk, a chair, a carpet, a picture on the wall, a bookcase, an opening into a space beyond, flowers, a curtain in the foreground, and most importantly, uh, that the intersection of strong diagonals, the figure of a woman, and then rehashes them. The objective was to recreate the scene from materials found in magazines. Fragments that could reconstruct, uh, however crudely, the atmosphere of the still that was haunting Hamilton's imagination. A few perspective lines were brought in to stitch things together. Wash was used uh, to fill in certain gaps, and the reenacted drama took on a new life. Hamilton learned that the slightly disturbing perspective he saw in the shockproof still photograph was magnified in the wildly exaggerated mismatching of his collage interior studies, and that the flaws in viewpoints added a strange excitement to the image. The figures in all three studies were selected because their size roughly fitted the purpose. In study A, we are held by a drama of an intensity similar to that of the still in which Patricia Knight stares at the camera claiming our attention so compellingly that the body on the floor behind the desk becomes a secondary factor. But what is the woman in interior study A actually doing? 
She may have been using a vacuum cleaner with her left hand and perhaps holding the cord with her right. Now we shall never know. There is an untold story in study A, and that mood of suspense recurs in the confused lighting of study B. The woman lit from below is disquieting. Her pose could be read as a dance or a crucifix. In fact, she was lying on a bed in an advertisement and was rotated 90 degrees to play the new role. The girl in C is walking oddly, with her arm extended because she was leading a horse in the picture from which she was cut. When assembling a collage of this kind with a stark of magazines to fit the image, things are moving so fast that it is only later that questions arise. While working on the subject of interiors, Hamilton discovered a product he thought might be useful. It was a series of perspective grids that provided a range of possible viewpoints. Printed on sheets of paper, they were magic carpets, ready-made for architects or interior designers to trace over. Collaging bits and pieces to fit to the grid proved surprisingly feasible, but less interesting than his free-fall approach. Desk, another study, was made to try out his thoughts on the fabrication of the image. Hamilton had made a careful perspective drawing of the desk in the foreground of the still photograph, so it was possible to blow up this detail to the scale required in his large panel. He then, in order to avoid the necessity of squaring up and redrawing a full-size study, pasted the enlargement on a board and assessed the possibility of using some unusual materials. Hamilton had come across a cheap self-adhesive plastic sheet called Fablon, still available 44 years later, that could be cut and applied to a surface easily to give the effect of veneered wood. He cut the fablon so that the printed wood grain followed his perspective. He also tested graining with paint. The small painted study of the desk makes the case for abstraction quite clear. Desk is not only a key painting in the series of interiors, it is also the first time that Hamilton adopted the language of the steel, later found in both his prints and his paintings. He brings a rectangle of primary color, its source clearly signaled, capriciously into the pot to spice it up. The, the steel rectangle in perspective on the surface of the painting becomes, of course, a quadrilateral. It was time to get to work on the final panel, and Hamilton decided to prime two sheets of 122 cm by 162 cm block board, which he took to Kelpra Studios where, with his friend uh, Chris Prater, he worked to screen print Patricia Knight onto each panel. A large stencil was prepared and placed uh, on the panel. As no measurements had been taken, the figure was placed in a location that Hamilton judged to be well related to the proportions of his rectangle. The second panel was then screened uh, with the figure in a slightly different position. The reason for the doubling of the work was that screen printing can go wrong. It was also possible that the figure might be placed better on one board than the other. The composition of the film still in which the desk is dominant was followed quite closely in interior one. The painting deviates from the still in the absence of important references to the storyline of the scene. Lying at Patricia Knight's feet in the photograph is the body of a man, most of which is hidden by the desk, and there are clues that lead us to suppose that he is dead. The handset of the telephone on the desk has uh, not been replaced, so he could have been speaking on the phone before he died, and Patricia Knight looks bemused rather than concerned and is making no effort to help. The advantage of using blockboard instead of canvas as a support was that Hamilton liked the possibility of using shallow relief or gluing to the rigid surface objects such as the pencil pointed accusingly at Patricia Knight. Blockboard also allowed objects to be inlaid. 
there is a shallow inlay of a lenticular winking eye in she, and the mirror with a fancy frame in the first collage interior study A reappears as a real glass mirror embedded flush with the surface in interior one. The curtain to the left of the painting, which stops short of the bottom in the image in the film still, is common to all of the studies and both of the interior paintings. Hamilton brought the curtain forward to drop below the edge of his panel in order to separate the viewer from the stage, thus defining the area of action in the manner of a front curtain in a theater. Though the body of the man does not appear in any of Hamilton's painted or collaged versions of the subject, he was very conscious of the need to retain the atmosphere of foreboding that the still generated. The red brush marks on what might be a carpet in interior one look more like smeared blood than paint, and the open drawer of the desk is so obtrusive that it appears to project aggressively out of the plane of the picture, in direct contradiction of the effect of the curtain. The scene is a dream that makes no sense and does so even less when a fragment of a picture on the right-hand wall is noticed and found to be a cutout from a black-and-white photograph of the painting itself. When Hamilton worked on the studies and paintings based uh, on the still, he had not seen the film, and he had no knowledge of the plot. He turned a blind eye to the harsh lighting which shed a strange pattern of shadows of window frames onto the floor and the body beyond. He ignored these clues to the drama and became infatuated with the subject, interior. The pictures are about spatial ambiguities. The drama is off stage. Prepared largely as a backup should the first screen printed fail, the second panel with Patricia Knight's figure starkly printed on a white priming was brought into play because the many possibilities of the subject were so inviting. Interior one had followed the general layout of the still, with the dominating desk in the foreground. The style of interior two was notched up a decade or so by the addition of an Eames chair. A touch of modernity worked in shallow relief from a 6 mm thick piece of aluminium shaped to the form of a seat, and then upholstered with balsa wood carved and coated with red flocking. The compositional purpose of the desk in interior 1 is served in interior 2 by a carpet, the main function of which is to allow a pool of red paint to create an atmosphere of apprehension. A television set sits within a cutout square, perversely rectilinear in the perspective scheme of the room. The isolation of the square is made clear by the shadow cast across the corner behind it by the only implied light source. The television screen displays Abraham Zupreder's film of President Kennedy's assassination while Patricia Knight stares blankly at the camera for her still shot. Both of the large interior paintings exhibit an eagerness to learn from the studies that preceded them. What develops is a kind of figurative abstraction. The curve directly above the carpet in both of the final interior paintings first appears in interior study A. In interior 1, the cut is defined by a red line, but in interior 2, the white shape contains a heavy black straight line unrelated to the curve, an arbitrary intervention. A more direct indication of the artist's desire to play with abstraction is the Yves Klein monochrome painting, colored in the international Klein blue made famous in the 1950s, which is seen through the opening behind Patricia Knight. Hamilton's interiors of 1964 occupied him for most of the year. An earlier involvement with an interior had been in 1956, when he spent only a day making his collage Just what is it that makes today's home so different, so appealing? He was to return to the subject in later years. The shockproof paintings were completed just in time for the Hanover Gallery exhibition which had been proposed by Eric Brausen after the publication of his work in Living Arts. This new exhibition would open to public scrutiny works dating from the 1956 This is Tomorrow collage 
to the still wet interior too. Ask for this compelling and beautiful book at your local bookstore. Thank you very much for watching this video and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.